Yo guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of the FM Reboot. It's episode number 20 and today we're returning to a brand new season as our third year as Wolves manager gets underway with Champions League football coming to Molyneux. Today you'll see how pre-season went. The first game of the season <laughs> where the Emirates against Arsenal and of course the much-loved transfer special as well. Let's get to that first as always, yeah. Let's do it, come on now. So after a wild finish to the season, which saw Wolves finish in fourth place, we snuck into the Champions League and there was a bit of confusion at the end of the season what would happen with Leeds winning the Europa Conference League, Chelsea winning the Europa League and then Arsenal losing the Champions League final to PSG. In the end, Champions League football was confirmed after that loss there uh, by Arsenal and I think if Arsenal had won it, we would have dropped to the Europa League. So we thank PSG for getting us into the Champions League this year technically and um, yeah, the transfer window was an interesting one because we had quite a bit of money to work with but again due to the financial situation I didn't want to spend all of the money the board gave us but in the end we only spent a little bit more than what we raised in players sales so we started the outgoings as always the most noteworthy of course you knew about it Jao Moutinho who scored one of the four goals on the final day uh, went to Beijing go on Jao get that bread over there in China uh, on a free transfer was going to lose him I didn't want to lose him but unfortunately uh, the vet decided he was finished in the Premier League and wanted to move elsewhere uh, we saw quite a few little uh, youngsters here didn't have too much of a future at the club and also two noteworthy sales this one went through at the end of last season. Ruben Vinegre, uh, our left-sided player, we sold him to Copenhagen uh, in Denmark for 7.5 mil. Totally fine. As a backup left-back, right, Nuri, he's all right, but to be honest, yeah, I'd rather have the cash, to be honest. And also, uh, a big sale here, Patrick Utrone, uh, that was the biggest sale of the window, went to Sporting Lisbon for 19 million. Uh, we are paying 10 grand of his wages up until the end of this season, as that was when his contract expires, when so the final year of his deal, and to get almost 20 million, I mean, yeah, he's only 24 years old, some decent stats, but to be fair, didn't really play for us at all. It was like third, fourth choice striker. So that's a pretty decent sale in my opinion. So in total, 27.5 mil raised for the sales and not much more getting spent on the signings. It was a quietish window, but a window of good deals. Let's reveal the signings one by one. So we'll start with this guy coming back once again for a third straight loan deal. Hashtag forever alone. Would this guy ever sign for us on a permanent deal or play for Barcelona? I think the guy is going to spend his entire career on loan from Barcelona at Wolves. Third straight year, he's back at Molyneux, retains the number 14, Francisco Trincao. Um, again, Barcelona, like I inquired about signing the guy on a permanent deal. And I think they wanted something like, what was the release called? A hundred and something million? A hundred and, where are we here? A hundred and eight million pounds. And I was like, guys, come on, seriously now. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Third straight loan deal though, and once again, paying his wages but no monthly fees. That's totally fine with me. Wanted to come back after two loans of us. And again, he's, he's done all right in the past two years. Not too bad. And again, as a young winger, he remains here on loan. I don't know if we'll ever get him permanently, but for now, just paying his wages, I'm totally fine with that. And there really aren't that many signings this year. In fact, it's just the four. This might be my quietest transfer window in the summer ever. Just four new players coming in. This is one to four, signed on a free transfer. Uh, you know I love those vets with the high mental stats. And here is another one. Uh, Felipe Caicedo, a returning to English football after the two years, sorry, three years even. He spent on Manchester City after signing from Basel all those years ago. Uh, since then, he's been around. Uh, obviously went to Russia for a bit. Then he came to Spain. Then went on to Italy to play for Lazio. And in the Serie A the past two years, he's done really well. 10 goals in 32 last season, 11 in 31 the year before averaging over a 7.0 so Caicedo despite being 33 years old is still relatively decent again physically not as quick or as strong as he might have been in yesteryear but mentally excellent excellent stats here including 18 determination and 20 for teamwork and work rate you know I'm pleased to see this technically as well despite being 33 still got it will turn 34 in September and the contract's not bad either it's just 31 grand a week it's only a one-year deal he'll get an extension if he plays 15 league games but I don't think that'll happen he's third choice behind Jimenez and Silva as well but as a vet for dressing room leadership experience European experience yeah pretty happy just on a free transfer and there's only two more signings to show you. And again, we're talking good value for money deals. And I'm going to show you possibly one of the biggest bargains I've ever picked up in FM history next on a free transfer released by the Red Devils. What an absolute steal. And then some Eric Bailly comes in on a three-year deal. And I'll say it again. 
on a free transfer. I cannot believe it as the, Ivar uh, the Ivorian comes in uh, on 45 grand a week, again, three-year contract, released by Manchester United in the summer. And I, I don't really know why. Now, at Espanyol, he was very good. He then went to Villarreal for a couple of years. That's where he made his name out there as a great young centre-half to watch. Dorendo spent a lot of money on him in the 2016-2017 season. And they spent one, two, three, four, five, six years at Old Trafford. The past two years, he's had what you call shared game time, if you will. But when you look at his average rating and his stats here, he was consistently good in the relatively limited game time he got. But maybe he had a tiff with Oli, I don't really know. But they decided to release him in the summer, and I literally cannot believe after I had him on trial for a couple of weeks, no other clubs went in for him other than us. Am I missing something here? Because if I am, I really need it pointing out, because I don't see it at all. Physically, this guy, as we know, is absolutely excellent. He's a real athlete. You know, he's quick, he's strong, he can jump, he's six foot two, he's got great stamina, looks after his body really, really well. Just a superb athlete, Eric Bai. And again, mentally, he does lack the composure, the concentration and the decisions that you'd ordinarily like on a centre-back these days, but he's very aggressive, 16 aggression, 70 anticipation, 18 bravery as well, he dives into tackles as well, so we'll be watching out for that as the years go by, but with 15 positioning, 14 heading, 16 marking, 17 tackling, he's a pretty decent old-school centre-half, physically very strong, decent aggression and bravery, and technically as well, the trio there for the centre-back, all 14 or higher, heading the least at 14, 16 and 17 for marking and tackling, very decent indeed. Not great when playing out from the back, you'd say, with seven vision, but even so, as a no-nonsense centre-half, and on a free transfer, absolute bargain, and only 45 grand a week as well. I feel like I'm missing something here, but I don't know what it is. This is where I found out he's like suspended for the next 12 months or something, I don't know. But um, anyway, the final signing I'll show you is literally the only player I spent money on this season, which is absolutely crazy. Cheapskate Doc's back at it again. But I'll show you him. I'm very excited. He's the replacement for Jao Moutinho, the long-term successor for the vet. And you know who he is. Welcome to Molyneux. I've had you before, Emmy Buendia. Yes, coming in on a 36.5 million pound deal. That was the minimum fee release clause he had at Norwich uh, for clubs in Champions League. And after qualifying for it last season, we could meet that clause. And you best believe I was going to meet it every single day of the week. Now, if you watch my Norwich save, then you'll know how good this guy is. And with everyone talking about Jack Grealish potentially going to Manchester City, what a lot of people are forgetting is that Aston Villa got a baller in Emmy Buendia to replace him. It's a brilliant sign from Norwich in the summer and I can't wait to see how he gets on at Villa Park and where we'll have the same impact as Grealish we're yet to find out but at Norwich for the four years he spent there he was absolutely excellent in the game and of course in the championship season in the game he was ever present there 7.54 guiding them to the pro uh, guiding to promotion and then last season the Premier League Norwich survived I wouldn't say primarily because of Buendia but he certainly helped, no doubt about it. Seven goals, six assists, starting with 6.86 in 35 games. There was interest from RB Leipzig and Spurs. Spurs never put a bid in. The Germans did, but in the end, he decided to stay in the Premier League and sign for us. Emi Buendia is great, as we know. In our Norwich say we often played him on the left, we often played him on the right, and we often played him through the middle. I think I'll be playing him through the middle, though, in this team. He is quick, no doubt about it, and being a right-footed player with the stats he's got, he definitely could be an inside forward, but through the middle, I think that's where he's going to excel. He's got 18 for the, uh, for the uh, for flair, 16 determination, 16 off the ball, 16 vision as well, 16 passing, 16 technique, 16 first touch, 17 dribbling as well. And again, he can, he can cross the ball. There's no doubt about that, but I think through the middle is where he's going to excel the most. And for Buendia to replace Jao Moutinho, again, 36.5 mil, excellent sign to meet that clause there. And again, a five-year contract, 90 grand a week. I've got to say, I'm happy to use this guy once again. He was a star in my Norwich save for the first five or six years before he sold him to China. But here he's at Molyneux and a long-term successor for club legend, Zhao Moutinho. So... That's it. It was a really, really quiet window, I must admit. You know, for us to go into the Champions League and do very little business and only spend money on one of the four signings we picked up, pretty crazy, right? But the reason I did it is, again, to manage the financial situation as well as we could. In the end, we only spent 9.5 mil in terms of a net loss in the summer when you add in vinegre sale at the back end of last season. So only a £9, nine million pound loss in the end. And um, when you look at the finance situation here, after the sale of Coutrone just went through, 37.8 million in the balance, 40 million in the transfer budget, whilst there's still a month to go until the summer window's over, I'm not sure I'll be spending any more money. If we do, we'll probably look to add more depth. Other than that, I think I'm done. If you look at the team report, what you will see 
is that we've gotten much better uh, in these past couple of years heading into season three. There are so few weaknesses than before, though this weakness definitely needs to be eradicated, as does this one as well. Um, but so many more strengths to our name now. And uh, this is, this is again, just great to see. Year by year, we reduce these and improve and increase these. Um, and again, as for the squad depth, that's the only area of concern for me this season. This is our first year playing European football. It will cause some physical strain. That's the only concern for me like you know our, our squad our first 11 has a great deal of quality in it the question is do we have the depth we're lacking depth at left back we're lacking depth in goal we're probably lacking depth as well in the playmaker position despite the signing of Buendia that's my only real concern so we do sign a player or players it will most likely be players for the bench as opposed to starters now, we do have a couple of issues in the dynamic screen right now. Uh, the team cohesion, club atmosphere, and managerial support is either good or very good, so that's great for me. But, unfortunately, two of our star players are a little bit disappointed that I blocked a couple of moves to them in the summer. Um, PSG put in a knockoff bid for Semedo, and Barca did the same with Ruben Neves, and I was like, guys... Come on now. I know you want to go to pastures new, but samedo has got three years left on his deal. He's 28 years old in the prime of his career. Ruben Neves, you're an idiot, mate. You signed like a seven-year contract last season. You got an extra four years and an extra two years that are optional extension by me, which of course I'm going to meet. Bro, you played yourself. You and your agent played yourself. You want to leave. I'm not letting you go for anything less than 150 million, mate. And I mean that too. You played yourself, pal. You're here for the long term. But as the club hierarchy, uh, after Jao Moutinho left, we needed a new team leader. We had Cody, we had Patricio, and now Raul Jimenez has stepped up as a team leader for this season. I don't know how much longer Jimenez will be staying. That's the question. But um, for now, he becomes a team leader. And as the social groups as well, uh, right now, everyone's in the main WhatsApp apart for Philip Kisaid, uh, Kaiseido. He's waiting for the invite to the WhatsApp group. I'm sure we'll get it soon. But for now, he remains the only outsider. Moving on to the competition expectations for season three. As you can see, just like last season, the border said in the Premier League, just finishing the top half. I love the luxury of the low expectations from the board. Totally different to season one when they said qualify for the Europa League. FA Cup reached the quarterfinal last year, not out in the fourth round by Spurs. Carabao Cup reached the quarterfinal last year, not out a round fewer by Manchester United. But again, to be honest, I'm not really fussed either way about this, but I would like a better showing in the FA Cup after reaching the final in season one. Now, to so the Champions League, the board expectation is be competitive. We're not expected to get beyond the group stage of the Champions League. Okay, fair enough. I mean, I hope we do, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. We'll enter the group stage in September. The draw is at the end of August. I'll try and make sure it's in the next episode if I can. And that's the season preview of the Premier League as well. Uh, where are we here? There we are. We're expected to finish in eighth place this season, which to me, I think is a little bit low, personally speaking, after last year's fourth place. I think really here to here is where I'm targeting. If we can sneak into fourth place again, I'll be absolutely buzzing. But one year in the Champions League and then drop into the Europa League or Europa Conference League, that will do me fine. So eighth place is where the media expects to finish, but I'm, I'm targeting here to here. That'll be fine for me. And before the first game of the season, a brief look at pre-season and our upcoming schedule for this year, which as you'll see, is going to be a little bit staggered due to the World Cup in Qatar coming uh, in November slash December. So pre-season started off poorly and then we turned it around. And just like last season, we've got a tough start to the campaign. I'm hoping that the ball won't set me a points target like they did last year. Um, but again, we've got a very tough start to the season. They're Arsenal at the Emirates on the open day, then both Manchester clubs, both home and then away as well. Afterwards gets a little bit easier. But um, even so, just like last year, tough free opening day fixtures for us here uh, with Wolves. But again, as you can see, the World Cup will be coming in November and December in Qatar. I will show you the groups in Qatar and who is in what group as soon as I can. There we go. And uh, yeah, so again, this will be coming in November and December. So I'd imagine a few of our players will probably go away for it. Uh, most probably won't get selected. But even so, these are how the groups are. And again, it will be starting on the 2nd of December. Interesting stuff. I don't know how we're going to handle that with the Champions League, to be fair. I guess I just have to wait and see. So moving on then, uh, we did the first game of today's episode. It is indeed the Gunners away at the Emirates. They've been really good since the save began. And uh, yeah, consistently competing for trophies. Last year, of course, losing the Champions League final to PSG right at the death. An extra time, that must have hurt so much. They'll be looking for revenge this season, knowing we've taken their spot in the ECL. So heading to the game, this will be our team right now on the injury report. As you can see, just the one player, uh, sorry, two players down now actually. Sorry, Hunter's got injured in pre-season, shot Cara. And also Buendia went down 
down in preseason as well with a pull calf muscle. Won't well, see him for the first two or three games. So this will be our team 4-2-3-1. Who needs a secondary tactic when this is working so well? Watch us lose 4-0. Uh, Patricia doesn't go back for his like Nuri. by making his debut alongside Big Chris and Samedo and Nevers and Forsby be through the middle. Traor and Drinkow on the inside forwards and Pedro Neto plays through the middle supporting Fabio Silva. On the bench, Bettinelli, Cody, Robert Jordan, War, Prowse, Pedence and Felipe Caicedo as well. First game, it's the Gunners away in North London. Let's get off to at least a decent start. Come on, Wolves. Yeah, if you remember back in Season 1, um, Arsenal only missed out on the Premier League title on the final day to Liverpool. As big Chris heads that free kick just wide. And last season, of course, again, reaching the Champions League final. Incredibly impressive. Um, but this season, will they, will they be able to maintain that good start to the series? Well, not entirely sure, but halfway through the first half, still 0-0. And at the moment, we're relatively comfortable. Arsenal, traditionally, always do really well for me in FM. Like, really, really well. As Traore gets on the move, and it's a splendid run, but the shot is easily caught. And it's still 0-0. Again, I don't know we can get back in the top four this season last year. I wouldn't necessarily say it was a fluke. But towards the end, let's just say we were so close to bottling it. And thankfully just about managed to hang on. Not sure we can do it again, but, you know, just, just keeping European football of some kind will, will do me fine. Again, Europa League, and hopefully not Europa Conference League, but if it is, that's better than nothing. Arsenal yet to get going. So now I just said that, watch him go a goal up. Dusan Tadic escapes his man as Odegaard finds Kieran Tierney down the left. Semedo to beat, and the Scotsman finds Odegaard, and Brozovic's shot trickles in to the bottom corner. Gun is in front, and that is just typical. Yeah, the reason why I don't think we can do fourth again is because I just don't quite think we're at the level of these teams yet. I don't. The traditional top six, I still feel, are like one step above us at the moment. Um, like, we're getting there very closely. And again, gradually, you'll see, season by season, we're making slight but steady improvement to the ability of our team. We're, we're getting there, but it's very gradual. We're still not there just yet. The key for me is keeping the stars. You know, Semedo, Neves, Jimenez, I suppose, as well. We lose those guys, and then we're going to start to struggle. But if we can keep them here for all their primes, then we'll be all right. And again, Jimenez is 31 now, so we will need replacing at some point. But Fabio Silva is still described as a wonder kid and developing well. So he's the long-term success for the Mexican. I don't really know the areas of concern. And this hasn't exactly gone according to plan on the opening day. We actually had the better start of the game, but since then, I mean, we've been absolutely dominated in the stats, and I won't try and brush that under the rug. So, looks like we will lose on match day one, just like last season. But again, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Last season, we lost our first three games. The Wolves board thought about sacking me. Yeah, we finished in the top four and qualified with the Champions League. So, I'm not, I'm not too concerned by this. As Caicedo gets on the move, and Leno makes the easy save. It's all right. These guys got to the Champions League final last year. We're not at their level yet. We're getting there, but we're not at their level yet. So uh, that's that's okay. I'm not too disappointed. Unlucky boys. Would have been nice to win there, but it wasn't to be. Don't go harsh on the boys. It's a marathon, not a sprint. It's all right. It's match day 1 of 38. I think sometimes people can forget that progress and time isn't always linear. But also as well, things do take longer in an FM save to build up and become a really, really good team. It normally takes you like, I'd say again, three to five seasons before you get your identity sorted and then you make serious progression. So this season, again, if we can just keep ourselves in Europe, that's more than good enough for me. Might lose in the opening day, but again, plenty of the campaign to go. But that was this episode of the FM Reboot, guys. Be thankful for you enjoyed. If you haven't, please drop a like. Much love to you. Have a fantastic day. And we will see you for the next episode uh, where we'll come back with the Champions League group stage draw, which will come just before the Norwich game. And I think, again, the first group game is going to come around here. So I might return for that as well, plus maybe West Ham away. That would be a nice little doubleheader there. Or possibly the Foxes at home. I'm not entirely sure. Have a great day, guys. Much love to you all. And I'll see you next episode of the FM Reboot featuring the Champions League group draw and probably the opener as well. Very soon.